All right, for the next part, we're going to take a look at the bolt that connects through this flange um, for this cable. So if we look at the PDF, I'm going to drag this guy over here and let's zoom in on this connection. So we have a couple of bolts and this piece right here that goes through that flange. Now we can model this piece inside the existing cable or we can uh, model it separately and bring it in as a nested family. What I would recommend oftentimes that you do when you're looking to create something is look within Revit itself to see if there are any families you can sort of get clues from or perhaps reuse. So in this instance I'm going to go to the Revit pull down here and I'm going to go to open family and I'm going to navigate into the metric families here, US metric, and oftentimes you're not sure what you're looking for but you, if you look at the categories oftentimes you'll find um, something that might give you a clue and in this case it's structural connections right so I'm going to double click on structural connections here and there are mounting parts precast and steel and I'm going to go to steel and we have if we look column base with anchors column plates and that's mostly plates so most of this is not going to be a bolt right if I go back up and I go to mounting parts, we have anchor bolts. And so let's take a look at those anchor bolts. If we single left click, it gives us, you can see a bolt there, a shorter bolt there, a longer bolt there. And what I'm going to do is just open up the shorter bolt. And if we zoom in and look on that, it looks pretty promising. So if I go to a hidden line view, you can see that that's quite similar to what we're looking for. So if I go to my elevations, I'm going to just go to my front elevation. It's a little confusing. There's a lot of reference levels and I can't see really any of the parameters that have been applied to this Revit family. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the right view and that if I zoom in on it you can see the parameters but they're just overlapping each other horribly. So I'm going to come down to the scale here, set that to 1 to 2 so it <clears throat> scales down those dimensions and then maybe even go to one to one. If I go to one to one you can start to see that there are a whole lot of parameters. It's quite a complex family but it is very similar to what we're looking for. If I open up my family types it's very complex, right? So a lot of different things going on. Um, once you get used to how families work, you have the possibility of coming in and modifying these parameters to accommodate what you might need in your project. However, this one is a little bit too complex and it would be easier most likely to recreate it in another family and not have to sort of renegotiate the various formulas and parameters that have been applied to this one. However, what I would like to look at is how they created this hex head nut. And so I'm going to go to my floor plan reference level and I'm going to zoom in on this guy and here's one of those hex nuts. And so I'm going to select it and I am going to go to edit extrusion. And when I open that up, you're going to see that what it has, what they've done is they've actually gone in and <clears throat> I'm just going to delete these until we just have one of them so we can actually see what's going on. So if I just go in there and delete these until I'm down to one, I can pick that and I'm just going to move it out a bit, right? So we can see. So basically what they've done is they've created <clears throat> some reference lines, restricted those reference lines to angles coming off these reference planes, and then done a dimension between the endpoint of this line and these reference lines and applied the same parameter to it. So as you change this S1 parameter, it makes the bolt larger or smaller. So what I did was I looked at this, sort of dissected it, and then translated it into another family, which we're going to look at next.